for me it had taken a few years um, looking for something um, that I could farm. It's uh, going on 11 years now that, that I took over this sugarcane plantation that had been left for years because we'd started a bullachina cafe. For me, it's always important to have real food and grow things, you know, that I know comes from, from a good and organic source. And I wanted to have as many fruit trees as I could possibly grow. Planned the, the areas of, of fruit trees, of the hardwood trees, of where I would have my uh, ducks, because I wanted it to be a mixed farm. One of the most important things in, in having a farm was to keep it clean, to control the type of grass that you have. Uh, I grow actually grasses which is tall and big, but for my animals. It makes it more friendly when people come to, to visit the farm and at the same time keep it uh, neat and tidy and organized. Uh, for example, you know, I now have to depend on a stick to, to walk, but for me it was important that I could get anywhere I wanted on the farm. So in growing things, in planning things, I had to have walkways, I have little areas where you could sit and rest or whatever. So all of that came naturally because there was a, a need for it, because I wanted to, to be everywhere. I wanted to see what was happening. I wanted to instruct them how and check that, you know, all the composting and everything else was done, you know, correctly, etc. Then we planned the toilet block because we know that's important. It must be absolutely safe. And then the, the tour guide should also have this passion for, for the land and what is grown on the land, so that when they're talking to, uh, to visitors, you know, the visitors feel like, you know, they can see it, they can feel it, they can, you know. And in the same way, we think it's also important that they should taste something, you know. Whatever might be um, fruiting, you know, growing at the time, one group we had the, the pomelos. They were just amazed that it was so beautiful, so sweet, yet you know, so big and and you know the, the segments are full of juice. And then uh, my uh, grandchildren wanted to have a party. So they had birthday parties sometimes, just being on the farm and I had to color a sheep one. Oh, there was a green sheep, where's the green sheep? Or I know these little the kids' stories. Like, for example, they wanted Peppa Pig once, so, oh, what did Granny do? I got, you know, a little pig and that was Peppa Pig. They loved it. They had friends coming and their birthday parties. So then there were a few schools initially that came. It was such a pleasure to show them, you know, some of them had never seen a little lamb and, and others just loved the little ducklings or the chickens. And uh, later then they would play games or uh, go on a treasure hunt. So we have a tour uh, that, uh, for, for children if they want just to be in this area where the animals are. So then they can go from one place to another and, and another. At the same time we have bees on the, on the farm. For me it's really important, uh, particularly where you have uh, you know, all the fruit trees. Uh, there's a lot of flowers everywhere as well, and that's more for our bees. We have creepers that I specifically grow, you know, near the trees, and other little uh, wild flowers, you know, in different parts of the farm. Um, and, and so the bees are happy also to be in this space. They don't have to fly for miles and, and you know, get, get food. And I have my son who takes good care of them. He, uh, he also uh, loves uh, the honey. <laughs> we all do actually, it's beautiful, yeah. Aside from having an aerial view and a nice clear map so that people can see the whole place, you know, from above, it's also important to put the markings on the ground. So we have, let's say, uh, right around the entire farm, Everything, everything has labels. And where you see these signs, root crops, nursery, honey, avocados, fruit forest, we have ducks. At those locations, we also have the big painted, hand-painted signs on the ground to make things easier for the visitors to our farm, the people that want to come and see the place. It makes it easy for them too to, to identify what all these things are. One, it gives you an over, overhead view of the entire property that you're going to go and visit. Secondly, we've marked out on the map, we have different lines running in and around it. 
Uh, these things are important for uh, when you're having visitors. Not every visitor is the same. I can't walk for long periods of time, but I want to access every single part of the farm when I see fit. Before you do anything, mark it out and walk it yourself many a times. Take your friends on a small tour and see what they think of it. They should experience something, something local, something that uh, belongs to the people, the tradition. We have done on the farm that's been really appreciated by people and is the Yambia Solo. When we've had visitors, bigger groups, we wanted them to experience something Fijian. So the cassava was pulled up, it was peeled and washed and we had the traditional uh, firewood drum. The cassava was grated. They wanted to, to scrape the coconuts. And I thought, wow, that's a good experience for them. So off they went. They had to learn how to hold it and how to move the coconut shell, you know, naturally. But they did it and they loved it. And they were just so happy. And that's just a simple thing. And then this is mixed together. It's just put in a simple pot and that's placed on top of our wooden Fijian oven. It really makes a difference when, when your visitors can enjoy taking part in, in something that you have to offer them on the farm. And then it's put on a banana leaf and then cut into slices and everybody tries. And people are like, wow, that's amazing. It's so simple and it's straight off the farm, straight out of, uh, out of the ground to have something local, something of the country, dish, that you can be proud to, to share with them. Let people experience the simplest thing. People love it too when it's just natural. It's like back to nature. We have many different videos of the farm, of the particular products, of the things that we do, and we've showcased this in, on all the TV screens in all, every single one of our cafes. And it's, you know, that's what allowed us uh, to generate a, uh, a local market for the, for the sole purpose of, of marketing your product. Videos are probably uh, a very good way to go. Why? Because they, can, they, show you, they show you the experience. A video can do, can do so much more justification for, for whatever it is that you want to market because it can show your product in action. In, in, our, in the near future, we hope to bring one of our one of the cafes here so that we can set up a cafe on the farm and that'll be 100% uh, yeah, farm to table uh, especially in the juicing. Something else that we're thinking of doing is and that's uh, to set up um, uh, like a farm stay uh, where we intend on doing it uh, let's say with, uh, with glamping tents. Something that is accessible and affordable to, to most of us from the Pacific. Everything that you, that, you, that you enjoy, that you want to achieve, most of these things take time if you're going to do it correctly. Like with the farm and the land, you can, nothing can be rushed. It takes time to grow and once it starts fruiting, then you can pluck it and you can enjoy it. It's also important that all my staff love what they do. It, it, uh, for me, that, that makes a difference. They've got to be happy, they've got to enjoy what they do, and that will come through in dealing with, uh, with people or customers. And if you can get you know, a lot of simple things across to people when they come on a tour, I think they will, they'll feel differently, and they will think differently about you know, what you have to offer. And I think anyone can, can open up, whether you're a huge farm or a, a little farm, they'll go back and they will feel wonderful, they'll remember it and that's what you want.